his presentation is energy in the universe and its entropic forms of existence according to the BSM super gravitation unified theory. Now, as you know, this is not my field, so I will try to read it as best I can, and please don't ask me any questions. <laughs> so, here I go. Um, as you can see, Stoyan um, is at York University, whoops, in Toronto, Canada. So, he begins his paper by asking a few questions. What is the relationship between energy and matter? Is the physical vacuum a pure empty space? What does define the constant velocity of light while knowing that the definition of velocity is distance over time? Is there primary etalons of space and time? Are we sure that Einstein's equation E equals mc squared does not have a limit in the microscale? These are fundamentally important questions, while their discussion is usually avoided. So you have to bear with me as I go down each paragraph. The treaties, basic structures of matter dash supergravitation unified theory, used a new approach for finding logical answers by reanalyzing the accumulated observations and experiments. The theory was first published online in 2001, and then it was archived in 2002 in the National Library of Canada, and was published as a book in 2005. Related articles are published in peer-reviewed journals and conference proceedings. According to this theory, the matter possesses hierarchical levels of organization from simple to complex forms, while energy is indispensable feature in all of these forms. The relationship between matter and energy in the different levels of matter organization is illustrated in his figure right here, which I hope you can, yep, I came out quite well. This is figure one. At the fundamental level, the matter is in its primordial form as a bulk of two super dense fundamental particles in a classical pure empty space, which is not a physical vacuum. The parameters of these particles are associated with the Planck scale of time and length. They interact by super gravitation forces that in pure empty space are inverse proportional to the cube of distance. Okay? An enormous abundance of these two particles, oh, whoops, sorry, sorry, I, my screen went blank and I pushed the wrong number. Okay. Uh, the parameters of these particles are associated with a Planck scale of length and time. They interact by supergravitation forces that in pure empty space are inverse proportional to the cubic distance. An enormous abundance of these two particles exist in the super heavy black holes located in the centers of each well-developed galaxy. When the energy to matter ratio is beyond some critical level, a specific process is initiated in which the fundamental particles congregate into self organized and to self-organized, okay, uh, and to self-organized hierarchical levels of geometrical formations governed by the fundamental super gravitational law. This process leads deterministically to creation of space possessing quantum properties known as a physical vacuum and a galaxy as observable matter. The space in which we live contains a superfine underlying structure called cosmic lattice, with features quite different from the old ether concept. The physical properties of the cosmic lattice permit explanation of all enigmatic phenomena in particle physics 
quantum mechanics, relativity, and cosmology. The cosmic lattice forms a space known as a physical vacuum. This lattice is responsible for the existence and propagation of the physical fields such as electrical, magnetic, Newtonian gravity, and inertia. The energy of physical vacuum is in two forms, static, which is enormous, and dynamic, which is weak. The static energy is directly related to the Newtonian mass by the Einstein equation E equals mc squared, and it is, sorry, and it is a primary source of the <coughs> nuclear energy. The dynamic energy is responsible for the existence of the electric and magnetic fields, the constant speed of light, and the quantum mechanical properties. The next upper, upper energy level is the dynamical energy of excited atoms and molecules. At this level, hidden energy well exists, such as the internal energy of the electron and the internal energy of atoms with more than one electron. The next upper energy level is that some organic molecules, and particularly in the biomolecules that contain ring atomic structures. In such a structure, some excited quantum states are not emitted immediately as photons, but they rotate in the ring. While in organic molecules, the energy stored in such rings is released by chemical processes, in the long chain molecules of proteins in the living organisms, the stored energy can be released simultaneously by triggering. A huge number of atomic rings are contained in the DNA molecule. The release of the energy stored in DNA, for example, is an avalanche process that causes an emission of entangled photons possessing a strong penetrating capability. A sequence of entangled photons emitted by DNA should carry the genetic information encoded by the cordons. Such mechanism is very important for communication between the cells of the living, living organism. I'm on page two. The next upper level of energy organization may exist in the brain. The brain is an organ of a most abundant, abundant number of atomic rings, maybe trillions, while its tissue environment might permit complex energy interactions. The next hypothetical upper level of energy organization is an information field that might exist outside of the living brain, but connected with it. In the case of a human brain, it corresponds to a specific field known as the aura. While the possibility of its existence is still not in envisioned by the mainstream science, the problem is that this field cannot be detected by the currently existing electromagnetic sensors. It is known that a single photon traverses a vast distance in space without losing a fraction of its energy. The BSM-SG theory unveiled the wave train structure of the photon that possesses these properties. Its propagation by the speed of light is defined by the vibrational properties of the cosmic lattice. The understanding of these properties permitted to understand not only the structure of a single pro photon, but also the structure of the entangled photons that are experimentally proved. They are a series of single photons <coughs> where the back end of the first one is connected to the front end of the second one, and so on. They are also stable, like a single photon, and preserve their whole energy. 
Our analysis predicted the possibility for existence of one specific configuration of entangled photons, at which the front end of the first one is connected to the back end of the last one, forming in such way a loop. All conditions for propagation of the light and the energy stability of the photons in this case are preserved, while such a formation may stay localized in a closed volume. The generation of such loops of entangled photons might be impossible by the ordinary technical means that are macro structures. However, such photons could be generated by specific microstructures. Such microstructures are the atomic rings which are quite abundant in proteins and DNA molecules. In these rings, the quantum state may rotate indefinitely while it could be released by a triggering event. It is well known that the photons could be polarized clockwise or counterclockwise. Therefore, the loops of entangled photons may have two cases of polarization. This may encode zero or one bit of information. The energy stability and the way of generation of such loops will permit the existence of interconnected closed loops. A complex sorry, complex interconnection of such loops may encode information existed in a closed volume. This leads to the idea of information field that might exist around a living organism. This field may appear from the range of living, of single living cell through colony of cells up to complex form of living organisms such as plants and animals. One particular experiment by using the Curlian effect applied to a leaf of a plant shows that after cutting a piece of the leaf, the image still shows the contour of the whole leaf. So this indicates an existence of localized biofield which is different from the known electromagnetic field. This kind of information field corresponds to the so-called etheric body around the living organism. The next form of information field is expected to exist around the brain. The human brain, for example, contains billions and even trillions of atomic rings. They might be involved not only in the complex, whoops, oh my, sorry, my finger touched that thing. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, okay. Okay. I'm so sorry. Um, okay. So I'll, re I'll start the previous sentence. They might be involved not only in the complex EM interactions, but also for generation of a local information field that may exist outside of the brains while still connected with it. This is in agreement with the theoretical considerations of the holonomic brain theory of Dr. Carl Pribram. This field corresponds to the so-called aura. Why can't the ordinary electromagnetic sensors detect the localized information field? The principle of detection of photons is as follows. The photon strikes the surface of the detectors with the speed of light and the photoelectron is released after the whole energy of the photon is dissipated. Such condition does not exist if we try to detect the formation of closed loop photons. Therefore, other indirect methods for detection are needed. The Curlian effect is one such method, but it uses high voltage and frequencies and may affect the inf information field. So it's not advisable for research on the human brain. Good point. 
other indirect methods must be developed. According to the BSM-SG theory, the energy conversion from the primary energy source to the complex levels of matter and field organization is a permanent syntropic process based on complex resonance interactions. The hypothesis information field based on entangled photon loops is published by the author in the physical archive and he gives us the website if you're interested in, in obtaining it. And on behalf of, of Sarge, thank you very much. <laughs>